the great question that has never been answered, and which I have not yet been able to answer, despite my 30 years of research into the feminine soul, is, what does a woman want? Most people do not really want freedom, because freedom involves responsibility and most people are frightened of responsibility. No mortal can keep a secret. If his lips are silent, he chatters with his fingertips. Betrayal oozes out of him at every pore. Men are more moral than they think and far more immoral than they can imagine. A man should not strive to eliminate his complexes, but to get into accord with them. They are legitimately what directs his conduct in the world. Anxiety in children is originally nothing other than an expression of the fact they are feeling the loss of the person they love. The only person with whom you have to compare yourself is you in the past. When making a decision of minor importance, I've always found it advantageous to consider all the pros and cons I have found little that is good about human beings on the whole. In my experience, most of them are trash, no matter whether they publicly subscribe to this or that ethical doctrine, or to none at all. The mind is like an iceberg. It floats with one-seventh of its bulk above water. We are what we are because we have been what we have been, and what is needed for solving the problems of human life and motives is not moral estimates but more knowledge. The moment a man questions the meaning and value of life, he is sick since objectively neither has any existence. The goal towards which the pleasure principle impels us of becoming happy is not attainable, yet we may not, nay, cannot, give up the efforts to come nearer to realization of it by some means or other. What a distressing contrast there is between the radiant intelligence of the child and the feeble mentality of the average adult. The interpretation of dreams is the royal road to a knowledge of the unconscious activities of the mind. Neurotics complain of their illness, but they make the most of it. And when it comes to taking it away from them, they will defend it like a lioness her young. The price we pay for our advance in civilization is a loss of happiness through the heightening of the sense of guilt. Men are strong as long as they represent a strong idea. They become powerless when they oppose it. Human beings are funny. They long to be with the person they love but refuse to admit openly. Some are afraid to show even the slightest sign of affection because of fear. Fear that their feelings may not be recognized or even worse, returned. The interpretation of dreams is the royal road to knowledge of the unconscious activities of the mind. The ego refuses to be distressed by the provocations of reality to let itself be compelled to suffer.
It insists that it cannot be affected by the traumas of the external world. It shows, in fact, that such traumas are no more than occasions for it to gain pleasure. Just as a cautious businessman avoids investing all his capital in one concern, so wisdom would probably admonish us also not to anticipate all our happiness from one quarter alone. How it is that animals understand things I do not know, but it is certain that they do understand. Perhaps there is a language which is not made of words and everything in the world understands it. Men have gained control over the forces of nature to such an extent that, with their help, they would have no difficulty in exterminating one another to the last man. The voice of the intellect is a soft one, but it does not rest until it has gained a hearing. Ultimately, after endless rebuffs, it succeeds. This is one of the few points in which one may be optimistic about the future of mankind. We are what we are because we have been what we have been. And what is needed for solving the problems of human life and motives is not moral estimates, but more knowledge. The poor ego has a still harder time of it. It has to serve three harsh masters, and it has to do its best to reconcile the claims and demands of all three. The three tyrants are the external world, the superego, and the ID. It is impossible to escape the impression that people commonly use false standards of measurement, that they seek power, success, and wealth for themselves, and admire them in others, and that they underestimate what is of true value in life. Words have a magical power. They can bring either the greatest happiness or deepest despair. They can transfer knowledge from teacher to student. Words enable the orator to sway his audience and dictate its decisions. Words are capable of arousing the strongest emotions. The dream is the liberation of the spirit from the pressure of external nature a detachment of the soul from the fetters of matter. Illusions commend themselves to us because they save us pain and allow us to enjoy pleasure instead. Men have gained control over the forces of nature to such an extent that with their help, they would have no difficulty in exterminating one another to the last man. The first human who hurled an insult instead of a stone was the founder of civilization. The more perfect a person is on the outside, the more demons they have on the inside. The interpretation of dreams is the royal road to knowledge of the unconscious activities of the mind. We are threatened with suffering from three directions, from our own body which is doomed to decay and dissolution, and which cannot even do without pain and anxiety as warning signals, from the external world which may rage against us with overwhelming and merciless forces of destruction. He does not believe that does not live according to his belief. Analogies decide nothing that is true, but they can make one feel more at home. We choose not randomly each other. 
we meet only those who already exists in our subconscious. When a love relationship is at its height, there is no room left for any interest in the environment. A pair of lovers are sufficient to themselves. But one thing about human beings puzzles me the most is their conscious effort to be connected with the object of their affection, even if it kills them slowly within. If a man has been his mother's undisputed darling, he retains throughout life the triumphant feeling, the confidence in success, which not seldom brings actual success along with it. The most complicated achievements of thought are possible without the assistance of consciousness. Men are not gentle, friendly creatures wishing for love who simply defend themselves if they are attacked. But a powerful measure of desire for aggression had to be reckoned as part of their instinctual endowment. The poets and philosophers before me discovered the unconscious. What I discovered was the scientific method by which the unconscious can be studied. What good to us is a long life if it is difficult and barren of joys, and if it is so full of misery that we can only welcome death as a deliverer? I consider it a good rule for letter writing to leave unmentioned what the recipient already knows, and instead tell him something new.